everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing. I've put some clues in my frame as to what sort of an unboxing we're gonna be doing today in case anyone wants to guess. So if you've seen any of the unboxings on my channel, you'll notice that there's been kind of a theme and the theme has mostly been, Elena is hungry, get them some food. <laughs> That's right, I'm gonna have some traditional British snacks. Now, some of you, if you've been on my channel for a little while, or if you know me in person, will know this, but I studied at drama school in London for three years. You know, sometimes I just like sit around and think about how I spent over 10% of my life living in a foreign country. That's pretty cool. It's kind of hard to tell from a distance, but these are all photos of London that were sent to me by my lovely pen pal Naomi, who I went to school with. This photo is actually a photo of me and my best friend Mo. She came to visit me my third year and saw me in one of my performances, and we're standing just near Tower Bridge. I've got this London Lego set, which I actually bought as a Christmas present to myself. Um, my first Christmas back from the UK. I worked so hard on it. I remember um, texting one of my friends after I'd finished it and I was like, I just built London. I love it. It's like my offspring. And then I instantly smashed it with my foot and had to like rebuild the entire thing from scratch. And then this mug I actually got as a gift for my mom, like my first year in London. It says, keep calm and carry on. So I'm like already surrounded by pieces of London and I'm about to be filled with pieces of London. Okay, so I have to admit something. Snack Crate was actually having a 50% off sale. So all the prices were like half what they usually are. So I was like, oh, let me just get this one. It's my price range. Um, the snack box that I've got is actually like the family size crate. <laughs> one of the funny things about today's video is that I've ordered a snack box from a subscription service that is like, try snacks from different cultures around the world, but they ship out of Florida. So, Coming to you live from Pensacola, Florida. Whoa! Oh, I spilled my tea everywhere. It's okay, everyone. There's no use crying over spilled tea. Okay, I'm gonna open it. Ready, steady, go! Wow, check it out. Welcome to this month's snacking adventure. Yeah, so as I said, this is a monthly subscription box. As always, I've only gotten one to try it. So if you're here because you wanna check out Snack Crate, you'll get kind of an idea of what you might get in one of these crates, boxes, crates, crates, look at that. So I guess this is like all the quintessential UK things that they've decided to put on. I mean, I don't know, my friends from the UK, does this sum it up for you? Are you pleased that these are the things they've chosen to represent your country and its snacks? Whoa. <laughs> If I get a little emotional during this video, literally just ignore it, okay? I do miss London a lot. I miss um, my friends from London so much. Check that out. Wow, that is nostalgic. I'm down for it. I love it. I can already see some of the flavors that I was looking forward to. Yes, I see pickled onion. Amazing. Fiery steak. Yes, I'm into it. I'm going to start with Monster Munch. And the reason I want to start with this is actually because one of my tutors uh, from school does the voice for these commercials. Oh, there's that smell. Yep. And that's what it looks like. When I say the, the monster hand, that's what it looks like. I'm just gonna eat it. Mm. To compare it to something American, it's almost like a salt and vinegar kind of taste. I was rummaging and I found this. I have to admit something. Jammy Dodgers are a good thing to include in the crate. They're quite popular as a snack. I have never eaten one. I'm not really a jam or jelly person while I'm admitting things. Uh, if you knew me in the UK, I will have already said this to you, but I'm not a huge biscuit fan either. I know. Let's go for it. There's that biscuity flavor that I just can't get enough of. Do you know what? Oh. <laughs> so for me, it's only okay, but as I said, quite a good thing to include in a snack pack. These are definitely super popular. Next up, I'm going for these hula hoops. It says, big hoops, barbecue beef. 
I reckon I'm gonna try to get one on each finger and then I'll, I'll eat them off. Okay, I've done it. Rings achieved. I'm gonna eat them all off now, ready? Yeah, they say it's like barbecue beef flavor. I kind of feel like it tastes a bit more like, um, I don't know if you've ever had like a beef consomme or like a clear beef broth. <laughs> That's so nice, man. I miss all these weird UK snacks with their weird tastes and weird shapes. This is something that I had not heard of or tasted before I went to London and someone said it, they're like, oh, you've never had flake. And I was like, I've never had a one now. It's all like very layered light chocolate. So it is quite like a nice light feeling, sensation, texture. I don't know, I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite things that I found out about like snacks in the UK is that around Easter time, they have these really big chocolate eggs and they're hollow. Uh, don't try this at home and don't quote me on it. But from my friends at drama school, what I was told you're supposed to do with these uh, chocolate eggs is you take it and you like crack it open using your forehead. So I had some friends round um, around Easter time for like a meal at my house and I got a bunch of chocolate eggs and we sat there <laughs> for so long with these eggs just like bang, ow, <laughs> and then none of them would crack. They're so hard. I'm gonna go for the real McCoy's fiery steak flavor ridge cut potato crisps. This is right up my alley. When it said fiery steak, I thought it would just be like flame broiled, but they actually meant spicy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'd say like steak steak, but similarly to the the hoops with the, the barbecue beef flavor, they definitely taste beefy and they definitely got a kick. So up next I found some wine gums. So wine gums are basically like these round fruit chew snacks. And they come in a bunch of different colors and flavors. Whenever I open up this packet and sniff it, I'm always like, oh my God, it proper smells like wine. Mm. Mm. Up next, Walker's potato chips, 100% great British potatoes. What I do know is that the flavor they've sent me is Worcester sauce. In what world should that ever be pronounced Worcester? Oh man, that smells Worcester saucy, that's for sure. Mm. It's got the same kind of acidity as the Monster Munch and it's also got a little bit of that sort of meat flavor. It like definitely reminds me of like the Worcester sauce that you like put on your steak. So these are Smarties. Another thing that I was like, what? Cause obviously in the US we do have Smarties and if you've seen them, they are like a little cellophane tube about this long, that wide full of like compact powdered sugary kind of discs that are a bit tart. Your teachers would like come around in middle school and put them on your desk before the final and be like, here's some Smarties so you can ace your exam. And you were like, I did not study and I have no idea what calculus is. I would compare them to M&Ms because it's like a little chocolate in a candy shell and they come in nice fun colors like that. Do you know, I actually don't know if this is accurate or not. I've always thought that Smarties have a kind of like fruity taste to them. Someone in the comments, let me know if you agree, disagree, if I'm making stuff up or if my case holds water. So this one is called a double decker. It says nougat top and crispy bottom in Cadbury milk chocolate. Well, if there's something that I love in this life, it's for sure a nougat top and a crispy bottom. I've never tried it before. I have to say when it comes to Cadbury, I had favorites for sure that I would just get like over and over again. I somehow feel like I just ate like half of a s'more with like a spoonful of rice crispy cereal. In other words, shall I say like cocoa puffs. I'm gonna go for these Maynard Bassett's juice chews. Something that I really love about this sweet is it says may contain milk. May. Do you know, I made all of those jokes about like it may contain milk because it said 
juice chew. I expected it to be something sort of like fruity and gummy. And then I opened it and it's like this color. Yeah, now looking at this, I feel like, yeah, it may contain milk. Maybe I'm the fool. <laughs> it was okay. I liked it. It had quite a mild taste. Do you know, like, if you're at lunch and you're like, oh, I'll trade you these for those or this for that. I feel like these aren't the most tradable snack. They're more like a coffee table sweet or like a handbag sweet. You like stick them in there, you put them out for your guests and people like take them as they're leaving at the end of the night. But it's not like, it's not the main show. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Give me, give me your hot take on the Juicy Chew. We can battle it out down in the comments below. I'll bring my boxing gloves. <laughs> I'm gonna hop straight back on the Cadbury train. Loads of Cadbury in this box, which is awesome. I've got some Cadbury fudge. Growing up, I always thought like, oh, Cadbury, the association that I had was like Cadbury eggs. My first like Easter season in the UK, I can't even begin to describe how many Cadbury eggs I ate. I was like, oh, it's only a pound for three. That's so reasonable. Mate, it was reasonable, but whoa, boy, did I go for it. Yeah, so the fudge bars are nice. I like them. I'm gonna show you the inside. I'm not sure if you can see there, but like it's a thin layer of milk chocolate. And then there is an inside that I'm not sure if it's like, I mean, presumably it's like fudge of some sort. It tastes almost like, like nougat -y, something kind of airy and light. Oh man, I am already, I'm just, I am going overboard with the sugar. I don't know that I've ever had a crunchy bar. Get that Friday feeling with crunchy. Let me show you the inside. Wow, it's shining like an angel in the sun. I've eaten like honeycomb, like proper honeycomb, but never in like the sense that like they make it on baking shows and stuff like that. Honestly, this is delicious. Um, I know that I can't eat all of this in one night because otherwise I'm gonna have like a sugar issue, but I am gonna eat the rest of this later. I'm gonna like put it to the side. I'm gonna put it over here and then I'm gonna eat it once I'm done. I'm gonna do the Walker's French fries because I've kind of been eyeing them out of the corner of my little eye for the past some minutes. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> it's almost like, um, I kind of like wanna put it with my moon, like. Yeah, it's just like light, crunchy, potato-y, salty, airy. Delicious, like everything you want in a snack. So Curly Whirly is another Cadbury sweet. I've had this one time before. It's quite unusual. I'm gonna show you. It's, um, I don't know if you can see, like in the cracks, that's all caramel and the texture is quite like flexible. It's really bendy. So I'm just gonna like, I'm just gonna bite straight into this one. And now I'm gonna be chewing on it until the end of the night. So thank you all for coming to my video. This has been reminiscing about London snacks with Elena. If you liked it, please leave a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, ding the bell. I don't actually know what that does. Fruit salad, I've had these before, but they're like um, gummy snacks, but I hesitate to say gummy because I feel like in America, when you think of gummy, it's, it's almost always like those sort of like clear gummy worms, gummy bears, like that kind of gummy. And these, as you can see, are opaque. Is opaque the right word? I've been using opaque as like something you can't see through. Cloudy. Is that correct? If it's not, please, someone let me know down in the comments because I've misused it a few times in the past <laughs> hour or so. Mm. I'm gonna go for the lion bar. I feel like if you were gonna name some like American candy bars and you were like Mars, Snickers, Kit Kat, if I was gonna do that for the UK, I would definitely put a lion bar in there. It's quite nice, it's quite light, quite airy. Again, not too much of like an overwhelming chocolate flavor. Just really tasty, really simple and really good. I'm gonna have another bite actually. I know, I know, I know, I know, but I'm still gonna have another bite, okay? We're gonna go for something that's like a little different now. I've got a Jaffa cake. Time for confession part two. I've never had a Jaffa cake either. I know. I have seen a lot of people eating these and this like 
This brand, McVitie's, is quite popular. I saw it lots of places, not only with Jaffa Cakes, but also with biscuits and other sorts of things. These Jaffa Cakes got heartily smushed in transit from Florida. I don't know what they encountered, if it was a gator, if it was a gale force wind, <laughs> but they are mushed. <laughs> Look at the angle on that, that's amazing. <laughs> I'm just gonna go for it. Yeah, here we go. I don't know if any of you watched my video on Sunday where I um, spoke on my meditations about love, but I mentioned how I've been buying myself Valentine's Day chocolates and there are three kinds that I don't like to eat. Those three kinds are fruit creams, jellies, and nuts. I have to say this snack <laughs> hits upon two of the things that I do not like in my snacks, which are fruit flavored and jellies combined. That's not what I want in my snacks. I say as I take another bite of it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go for the Space Raiders. I just picked them up and I was like, should I do it? I'm gonna go for it, yeah. The flavor of these uh, cosmic corn snacks is only labeled as spicy. So that's not very descriptive. So these I would say are like very similar in category to the Monster Munch, uh, except for they're shaped like little alien heads. So here we go. I was gonna be like not too spicy and then as I swallowed it kind of like all like coated my throat on the way down and I was like yes I would classify that as spice <laughs> I want to say it's almost like if you got like a really spicy curry of some sort I do like this flavor I don't think I've had these before but I'm digging it okay so I'm gonna go for this uh it says sherbet fountain I have never tried this before as an American, the only way that I'd ever encountered like sherbet, the word, that sherbet is like a frozen treat similar to ice cream, possibly non-dairy. Is that the difference between sherbet and ice cream? But in the UK, when you say sherbet, it doesn't mean that at all. It means like, um, like fun dip. It's like a sugared powder kind of sweet and Apparently in this one, I get um, a piece of licorice, which is what this is. That's quite sour. So now that I've licked all the sherbet off, you can like more clearly see the licorice. I think the sherbet is really tart, but the licorice is actually kind of like bitter and sweet and it somehow makes like a really nice flavor together. So I guess staying in the arena of like snacks that I have not seen before opening this sweet box, I've got this which says Strawberry Millions and the mascot is here. <laughs> it's Aubrey Strawberry. I'm assuming, well I would say Aubrey Strawberry but in the UK I'm assuming you say Aubrey Strawberry and then it, it rhymes. <laughs> okay. A few observations. One, the flavor is nice. I know like artificial fruit flavors are really contentious. I don't have a problem with artificial strawberry flavors a lot of the time. And this one I think is quite nice. And my second observation is that this is going to be stuck in my back molar until the end of time. It is extremely chewy, but you know what? I still quite like it. This at some point in its life was a fully formed boost bar and similarly to the Jaffa Cakes got a bit flattened in transit. <laughs> That's what I've got. I'm just gonna bite into it and hope for the best. I can definitely tell you what happened is that all of the insides of the bar made their way swiftly to the bottom and like collected here because all that I got was like a big mouthful of milk chocolate. So I am going to have another bite and see what I can see. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. As I was just chewing it, I was like, huh, I feel as if this has kind of like a similar flavor profile to a Twix bar. And I've just looked at what's in it and it says milk, chocolate, caramel, and biscuit, which makes sense for why Twix all of a sudden pinged out in my mind. Wham! Up next, we've got a Wham bar. I don't think I've had this before either. I don't know if this is a thing that you would do in the UK or with a Wham bar, but like, oh, let me do it before I open it. So in the US, when you get your airhead, the thing that you're supposed to do is this. Okay, it doesn't feel like it's working, but basically like 
you hold it like that and you start to shake it and it like condenses in the tube. Okay, it's kind of doing it. Is that something you do with a wham bar? My heart is telling me no. My gut is telling me let's eat it. Hmm, almost strawberry, but also kind of like, kind of a bit more like milky than that. I wanna say almost like cotton candy. Like the way cotton candy tastes when it melts on your tongue, it has that kind of a flavor. I'm gonna give it the rating of only okay. But if we're speaking about cotton candy and London, while I was at Guildhall, during your first year, the school gives you a pass to the London Zoo and you have to do this animal project where you observe one of the animals and like study its like physiology and how it moves and its habits and how it reacts to things like that. Um, and I studied the Pado, which is in the nightlife section. Remember that name, more to come on that. And I used to go to the zoo and I would stop at one of the carts and just get like a big thing of cotton candy and then like go stand in the nightlife section and wait for the Pado to show itself. <laughs> frazzles. Okay, here's one that I've never tried. I've never had a frazzle. It says crispy bacon flavored corn snack. I do love bacon. Hmm. What? Well, oh, whoa. First of all, very salty, like shockingly salty. Second of all, surprisingly bacon flavored. Like when I put that in my mouth, I was like, oh my God, that tastes like bacon. So we're reaching the end of the crate now. I've got three snacks left. And this is another one that I've never tried and actually, I've never seen this snack before. Blackjack? Starburst. That's what my heart said. It's a little square wrapped in a piece of paper, looking like a Starburst. I don't know if it's gonna taste like a Starburst. I suppose now is as good a time as any um, to let you all in on my party trick, which is that I can unwrap a Starburst using only my tongue. Let's do it. All right, there it is. I have to say, Starburst are a lot more loosely wrapped than this. I think I chewed a bit of it off. <laughs> it's licorice or licorice flavored. Yeah, I hesitate to say licorice exactly because I know there are like many different kinds of licorice and this is quite a mellow flavor. Marvelous Creations Jelly Popping Candy. I've never tried it before because as I said, as we've witnessed with my very first foray into Jaffa Cakes and Jammy Dodgers, I'm not a huge jelly fan. Uh, so I'm a bit like, Ugh. oh, <laughs> the word that I was fixating on was jelly. The word I should have been fixating on was popping. It's still going in my mouth. <laughs> They're like pop rocks. It's like chocolate with pop rocks in it. Wow, that was kind of fun. It was almost like a little pyrotechnic show going off on my tongue. I quite enjoyed it. Last but certainly not least, we've got prawn cocktail flavored skips. Honestly, I was kind of saving this one for last only because I feel like prawn cocktail is such a quintessential British snack flavor that I saw for the first time and was like, a prawn cocktail? What in the world? Mm, yeah, there's that. Ooh, prawny smell. Yeah, that's quite good. I'd also never had prawn crackers before going to the UK, and those changed my life. They're delicious. They're amazing. I can't believe that I just tried so many snacks. I feel like now is a really good time to remind you, if you are interested in Snack Crate and you're on this video because you're considering subscribing or trying a box, that I purchased the family size box. There are some other sizes that you can get. Although I did live in the UK for three years, I'm also supremely aware that 10% of your life is small compared to 90% of your life. So take what I'm going to say with a grain of salt. And I do hope that some of my friends from London and the UK will leave their opinions and impressions in the comments about whether or not they think this is an indicative spread of snacks from the UK. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that, yeah, for me, this range of snacks was pretty indicative of what you might find in a convenience shop in the UK. And honestly, I'd also say it's a pretty good range of stuff. Again, I will say 
there was a lot of sweets compared to savory and there were definitely a lot of Cadbury items. Again, I kind of anticipated that from the beginning and I'm not mad about it, but it definitely is something to be aware of. But that's it for me for today. If you wanna come back to my channel this Sunday, I can promise you some more art inspired by my time in London and specifically linked to one of the stories I told as I snacked today. <laughs> Intriguing. <laughs> All right, everybody, stay warm, stay well, stay safe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Don't become a YouTuber. It's literally impossible. Am I a YouTuber? I'm some kind of tuber. Like a root vegetable. <laughs>